Welcome back to Dongit's Model Railway. Today I am wiring up the centre track on the hill up from the storage yard. This track is a lot more complicated than everything I've done so far. It is both the first bi-directional bit of track, with trains running and stopping in both directions, and it is also the location of my DCC reversing section. In the storage yard everything is wired for anti-clockwise running. Clockwise trains must switch from red wire on the right in the storage yard to red wire on the left in the main layout, and vice versa. This happens within this bi-directional section. Trains coming up from the storage yard can use the outside line to enter the main level travelling anti-clockwise, or use this centre reversible line to enter the main level travelling clockwise. Anti-clockwise trains return to the storage yard via the inner line here, but clockwise trains must return to the storage yard via the centre line from this direction. Here's how the wiring will be done. This connects to the main DCC bus in the concentration point. This is a changeover relay which provides the DCC reversing functionality. I will be reversing the DCC polarity without any short detection this is purely driven from NX routing data. Both sides run through an ABC generator, so trains can be stopped when running in either direction. This connection will go to the outer rail. The inner rail has a Merg DTC-8 current detector wired to detect five separate track circuits within the reversing section. I'm going to control the ABC and DCC reverser using spare channels on this existing CAN V-out, which is located conveniently nearby. I've not got a convenient place to connect the DTC-8's input channels yet, so temporarily I'm going to run a very long cable to this input connector on an existing CAN V-out that's in a different place on the layout. More hardware will be required to support parts of the layout that haven't been built yet, and I can move these inputs to a closer board when one is installed later. Here are the electronics installed under the baseboard. I've shown you how I wired the track in part 1 of this series, which I've linked here. The CAN V-out controls the ABC and DCC reversing relays via the pink and purple wires. Here is that overly long feedback connection running under the baseboard to the other CAN V-out. As this is a temporary connection, I've not done much to keep it tidy. The software configuration for this builds on what is covered in part 2 of the series, which is here just in case you haven't seen it yet. For the reversing module, I've set up up entry and down exit conditions. There will later be down entry and up exit conditions too, once that part of the layout exists. The entry conditions switch the DCC reversing module over immediately. The exit conditions don't do this. I need to wait for the entire train to be within the DCC reversing section before the reversing module switches over. Once I've built more of the layout, I will be revising these exit conditions to check when the section behind the train becomes inactive. That will maximise the length of train I can run through this reverser. For the moment, just checking that the front of the train has got the berth track is sufficient. For the ABC, I've implemented a track direction flag set by the most recent active NX route. The ABC is then only activated in the most recent direction of travel. This is necessary because if both ABC modules are active at the same time, it just looks like low voltage DCC and the train doesn't react. Other than this directionality, the ABC is configured exactly as it has been before. Let's have a demonstration. I'll set the train off in down direction from the centre road, as if we've come from the layout in the anti-clockwise direction. I've chosen this particular logo today as it will show very clearly the reverse of Although it's outside my normal modelling era, it is a bit special to me. I have a picture of my great-grandfather driving this particular loco on the first New Haven boat train when it started running again in 1945. The loco was in wartime black livery at the 
time rather than this later green livery back when I've chosen to pick. Having traversed the entire storage layer, the train has now been lined up with the back into the centre road, as if it was to head out around the layout again in an anti-clockwise direction. To properly prove all this is working, let's stop it right here, give it a path back down to the storage yard again, and reverse it back over the junction. If you want to see more of my layout as I continue to develop it, feel free to subscribe, it won't cost you anything more than a mouse click. If you like this video, there's a button for that too. And if you've got any questions or suggestions, feel free to write me a comment. And there we go, back across the junction with no shorts. See you next time on Dongit's Model Railway.